Hey guys, so uh, I'm going to talk about DNA. So DNA is that a molecule of nucleic acid, and uh, this molecule is where all the information is stored. And DNA, similarly to what protein, uh, as protein have monomers, you know, the monomer of protein being the uh, amino acid, the monomer of uh, carbohydrate being glucose, if you remember those macromolecules we talked about, the monomer for DNA, and I'm going to write those words, I bet it's easy for everyone to know what I'm talking about, the monomer for DNA is the nucleotide. Nucleotide. So what is a nucleotide? A nucleotide has three major components. Those three components are the uh, phosphate group. So you have a giant phosphate group here at the end. And you can look at the, at the slides to see exactly what's in there. But I just wanted to show you uh, the three main points uh, of, a, of a DNA molecule. So there is then a sugar here. And notice how that sugar is not a glucose because it's not a hexagon, it's a pentagon. And so that sugar, it's a deoxyribose, if you really want to know about the exact name for this uh, video here. I'm just going to keep it simple. Sugar, phosphate. And the last one is the nitrogenous base. So the base here is usually a ring base and it's rings of nitrogens and carbon. So you can know the exact, with, like with a group here, the exact formula of those. It's not that important for now. Nitrogenous base, what's really important is you actually know some little thing about that those bases. So that molecule, that monomer here, it's attached, right? All of those are attached in these ways. And all of those will stack up. And come, when they stack up on top of each other, as I'm going to show you in a second, they form a long one-strand molecule. So this is your monomer. This is the one nucleotide. You have a phosphate group, a sugar group, and then a nitrogenous bed. Okay, so our molecule of DNA, it's a double-stranded, double helix, all right? So the way a molecule of DNA is usually represented, you have a lot of twist and turn, and that's your double strand. And here, I open it up, so a real, fully double-stranded molecule is just double-stranded the whole way, right? I'm opening it up in this way here to show you the bases that attach. And those stack here, if you zoom in on one of those parts here, you zoom on one strand of DNA, and one strand of DNA is just a stack of those monomers. So if you remember, those monomers are made of phosphate, then there is a glucose group, and those are attached, and then there is a nitrogenous base. So the nitrogen base is usually like two rings and then they are two little hanging or three hydrogen. So that's one monomer, right? And then when you start stacking them up, you can draw more and more of them, right? Stacked up. And they all have their little sugar. And they all have their nitrogenous base. Some of them can be the same, some of them can be different. So as I mentioned, some of them have two, and some of them have three hydrogen at the end here. What I want to emphasize in this case here is how do they attach to each other. And it's really important to see that along that strand here, the attachment points it's all between the phosphate of one group to the sugar of the next one. So that would be one attachment here. Then the phosphate of one group to the sugar of the next one. Then the phosphate of one group to the sugar of the next one. And that's how those monomers are stacked 
forming the long strand of DNA. Okay, so I'm redrawn here with monomer, and it turns out the phosphate and sugar is always the same for all of those monomers. But that part here, the nitrogenous base, can be either adenosine, it can be thiamine, guanine, or cytosine. And I write them this way because this really important principle, they are complementary. Adenosine is always facing thiamine in the double strand, and guanine is always facing cytosine in the double strand of DNA. So as I explained, those stack up, right, with the sugar of this group linked to a phosphate of the next group, and then the sugar of that second monomer is linked to the third phosphate of the third monomer, etc. But that base is going to face a base of another nucleotide on the other side that is complementary. So if this is adenosine, the other side would be thiamine. If this is guanine, that would be cytosine. If this is cytosine, that would be guanine. If it's thiamine, it would be adenosine. And that's really important to get. They are complementary.